It is 2024, my friends, and we are doing a modern, up-to-date PCSX2 setup guide and tutorial. This guide will focus on the nightly builds. They are the most up-to-date versions of the PCSX2 emulator. They have lots of features that do just amazing stuff, and I can't wait to show a lot of it to you. Today, we're just going to get the emulator set up, a game working, a few graphic settings so it looks really good, and kind of get you off to the races. But you know what? No more blah blah. No blah blah. Let's get cracking. I want to go ahead and show you guys real quick that over on my channel, I've already put together, oh, look at that handsome guy, some playlists, and I do have one on PCSX2 right there. If you go into this playlist, I will be adding to it more and more. Those first two videos are on the stable builds, but we're going to get into these nightly builds. So go to the first link in the description, and that will take you to the download page for PCSX2. On the left, you will see the stable releases, and on the right, you will see the nightly builds, okay? I'm gonna grab the latest one. I'm gonna go down to download release. When you click on this button, you can see that there is Linux, there's Windows, there's Mac OS, but I have a Windows computer, and I'm gonna download that to my desktop for the sake of this tutorial. Let's go ahead and minimize Chrome real quick. And you'll wanna have 7-zip or WinRAR, I prefer WinRAR, and you will want to extract that zip file into its own folder. And then you can get rid of the zip file. You don't need that anymore. So the first thing we want to do is set up our folder structure. That's the first thing we're gonna do. Inside your PCSX2 folder, right click, select new text document. You're gonna type in portable and press enter. Next, double click on the executable file itself to start the emulator and then immediately cancel out. What this is going to tell the emulator to do is to store all the files inside the same folder that your emulator is in. Otherwise, it would usually create all of these new folders over in your documents folder. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a games folder. I also wanna keep all my games in here with my emulator, everything in one place. Okay, so we're only gonna mess with three folders. The first is the BIOS folder. So let's go ahead and open that up. And we are gonna put in a single BIOS. Contrary to what other YouTubers will tell you out there, you do not need a different BIOS from each region. This emulator automatically bypasses the region lock. So a really good one to have is a USA BIOS version 1.6. If you wanna know what a BIOS file is, I do explain it in my earlier PCSX2 videos. Next, let's go over to the covers folder. I did grab a piece of cover art for Chulip, one of the games I'm gonna to play today, I'm gonna to drag that into my covers folder. It's just a ping, and I'll show you a bunch of different places to get covers, okay? Next, you'll need your games. Go ahead and open your games folder or wherever you wanna keep them and drag your games in there. We also have a Japanese game to show you it works with a USA BIOS. And that's it, we got the folder structure set up. Now we're gonna start the emulator and go through the setup wizard. Okay, so this is super easy. Select your language. I am obviously speaking English. The theme, you can choose from a bunch of different themes. There's like a lagoon theme, this baby pink theme, a pizza theme, but I like the sapphire and black theme. That is really what I like. Hit next. Here, it will automatically detect your BIOS folder. We only have the one BIOS file in there. We will select that and hit next. And here it's gonna ask you to add a folder with your games. Now, something important to note here, there's all these different formats that it accepts, and CHD is a really good format. And I'll have a video on how to convert ISOs to CHD. But right now I have ISOs, and we're gonna select that folder inside our PCSX2 emulator folder where I put them, and hit Next. Okay, so here we are doing controller setup. I have an Xbox 360 wired controller plugged into my PC. So I'm gonna select automatic mapping and select X input. That works really well. I will also show you where to do it manually here in a second. Okay, congratulations, setup complete. Click finish. And here we go. We've got two games that we have loaded in. You can see they're in a list format. And we got our Japanese game there, but if you wanna put them in an icon format, just hit those little squares up there, 
And let me show you real quick how to add cover art. So let's right click on Chulip, set cover image. We'll go to our covers folder, select that ping file and just hit open. And that's how you can manually add it. Now we'll have a video on how to do bulk cover art when adding to an entire collection. There are programs for that, but that's for another video. We're just trying to get a game running. Also, let me show you how to manually set up your controller. Go up to the settings tab, click controller, click on port one, and you can see you have a lot of options here. All you have to do is click on a button once, and you can click on the button you want to map to it on your controller, and it's really that easy. Let's close out of that because we're going to do what we came here to do and let's start up a game and we're going to do the Bonk's Adventure remake. Now you have a couple options. You can right click on the thumbnail there and hit fast boot or full boot, but you can also just double click it as well. So let's get it running. Okay, so it's asking me if I want to create a save file on my memory card in Japanese and I'm saying hi instead of EA, but uh, I know, didn't, didn't know I knew that, did ya? But yeah, we're just gonna uh, get the memory card. I'm gonna show you guys memory cards in a second, but there we go. We get the Hudson logo and it looks pretty smooth and we haven't even messed with graphic settings yet. I am gonna go ahead and cut forward to the title screen. Here we go. Look at that, look how smooth that looks. We haven't even messed with the graphic settings. That is incredible, huh? Let me cut forward to some gameplay real quick so you can see that. And wow, I mean, just a awesome remake on a classic game. They had it on TurboGrafx-16, the series, and they also had an NES version, which is really good. But let's exit out of here and let's work on graphics settings and show you the memory card section. So go up to the top left, click System, select Shut Down, and you have a couple different options there. You can pause, reset, exit the entire emulator, but just hit shut down and that'll take you back to the main emulator page. Okay, so let me show you where memory cards are real quick. Select settings, select memory cards, and you can go over here to create, and it's very simple. Select the size you want, name the memory card, and hit okay. Now what you can do is right click on your new memory card and put it in whatever slot you want, like slot one. Now, if you go back into create, you'll see a folder option that says recommended, but it also says it doesn't work with all the games. So I really didn't understand this as much. I'll have to research it a little more, but it said recommended, a lot more storage, but doesn't work with all the games. I'd rather just create memory cards and have my games work. So anyway, but I digress. Let's close out there and go start Chulip. And I'm gonna cut forward to the opening screen because we're gonna do a couple quick settings for your graphics to make it look so much better. It's insane. So as you can see in there, you can see some flickering, some anti-aliasing. Hit settings, select graphics. And this is really easy. Now I'm gonna select my graphics card as my adapter. That'll make it so it's not using my CPU. Go over to rendering. And for internal resolution, I like to select 3x. Now look how good that looks. That's 1080p. Another thing to do is to go under anisotropic filtering and select 16x. I think that's enough for me on a PS2 game, but some of you guys want to play in 4K or 8K, it is possible. And if you want to go into post-processing, you can mess around with the FXAA. That doesn't do that much, but I have a whole nother video I did on all these settings. There might be a few more. I probably need to do an updated video on what the best settings are, but go into my playlist. You can see all that stuff, okay? Let's cut back to the main screen. And there's one more resource I want to show you. And that's the PCSX2 wiki. And what you can do here is you can find any game. Um, and if it has kind of quirks and it has little problems. A lot of people have tested all these different games. I'm going to go find Chulip here and you can see it runs pretty perfect. People have tested this and it looks like there was one version that people were messing around with and found some problems, but the USA version looks pretty good. And you can do this with any game. So If you're having a little bit of problems, 
You can come here and look for solutions, okay? So, all right, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I will be doing probably five, six, maybe seven more videos on different stuff involving PCSX2, okay? I'm really excited to really get a fleshed out series on this emulator. So thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, share my video, like this video, and let me know what you want to see next. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you want to connect outside of YouTube, I do have a Twitter where I post video game stuff and top 10 lists, as well as an Instagram where you can see my collection and pickups. I also have a TikTok. You can see Groot, Rocket, and Gamora, my Great Danes, and shorter videos. And I also have a Facebook page you can follow as well. So I look forward to connecting with you.